Um, we are going to talk a little bit about church today. Uh, we would love to hear your feedback, hear um, some comments you might have, some suggestions. Um, leave information, have questions, please uh, just, just comment and, and we enjoy the feedback and, and the conversation. So we have been working hard um, on social media posts and getting information up, uh, useful educational resources for everybody to use um, while, while they're at home uh, for future uses in classrooms and we just um, hope everybody will take advantage of those. And I do want to thank my board of directors, um, all of our partners, and the staff and volunteer who make everything here at the museum possible. Um, we just are so grateful for those who come out and help us um, share our mission, which is to preserve and present the history of the rural farming community here in North Carolina. Um, and I think today is an important one as, as we look at family. It's about church, but it's about family and fellowship and, and community. Um, and I think that was all very important to the farming community. I don't think anybody would be surprised if I said that um, Southern, Southern culture is rooted in Christian values. And, um, and so I think we see that in the, in the farming community for sure. But today is Good Friday. And so I am certainly counting my blessings and, and praying for all of those who are struggling right now um, in our, our current crisis. So I, I pray we'll find um, a cure for this virus soon. Um, so again, faith was important to the farmers in our church exhibit here at the museum. We do have a quote up that says farming is part skill, one part labor, labor and one part faith because at, at some point the farmer has done everything he can do. He sowed his seeds, he's made sure he has enough seeds to plant, to, to cover the field so that he can make a profit for the year. Once he gets those in the grounds, it's, it's a waiting game for the right weather, for the good conditions. And until 1935, it was a guessing game as to whether the fields had the right nutrients and, and um, properties to make sure those seeds grew well. So, um, at some point, those farmers just, they've done everything they can do and they just have to wait for the crop to come. Um, and so that's the part um, of faith that the farmers have. And if you wanna know more about the soil nutrients, we are working on an exhibit that will talk about that. So stay tuned to our social media posts and, um, and we're thankful for, the, thankful for the Department of Agriculture who's working, us, working with us um, and soil and water on that exhibit. Um, but so it's not surprising that in these rural farming communities um, that they were committed to their fellowship on Sundays um, and not just their fellowship with God, but their fellowship with each other. Um, and if you've been following us on social media, you've been noticing that we have been posting some of our coloring book pages um, and many of those coloring books book pages focus on the chores um, on the farmstead and and many of them what the children did to help um, with those chores but many of those chores were preparing for the family to come on sunday and sweeping the house and sweeping the yard they would make sure that their yard was free of grass free of um, critters so that when family came by um, they would be impressed with the yard and with the house um, and they would even on Saturday nights, they would take baths. They would fill a barrel of water um, and set it on their back porch. And all of the family would bathe from that barrel of water, which is where the phrase uh, don't throw baby out with the bath water came from because they would start the baths with the oldest males and then the youngest child would get the last bath. So that's where that phrase came from. But then they also, if there was an extra um, biscuit, which was made with lard and oftentimes fat back, if they had an extra biscuit left over, they would shine their, their shoes for Sunday. So they would do that Saturday night and make sure those shoes look good. So they were preparing for Sunday fellowship and, and getting out of the house and not just that, but a day of relaxation and, and um, just a day away 
Um, not that they didn't do any chores. They would do the minimum amount of chores that they could. Behind me, you see the picture of Mr. and Mrs. Scott. And Mr. Scott is in his suit coat with a pair of overalls over top. And that's because they were preparing to go to church, but they had to feed the animals before they left. So they had to do their chores on Sunday before they, they left. Um, and then you can see the dress right behind me um, is, a, is, is a black pattern and it would have been a formal Sunday dress. So, um, so they did, they dressed nice and it, it, was, it was a time of, of rejuvenation. Um, so to say. So many of the churches were built by the local farmers. So the, the neighboring farms would get together and they would build the schoolhouse, a one room schoolhouse, which would also be a church building or function as a meeting hall if need be. So those churches were often family members or, or people you called on for help um, if you needed help in the fields or needed to borrow a tool. So um, I've heard it said in the community that those who you worked with, you churched with, um, because they were such a close-knit, tight community. Um, and like Easter today, um, Easter Sunday was, was one of the most attended Sunday weekends, or Sundays of the year. And Roy Taylor reminisces in his book, Down a Country Road, which I have right here, down a country road, he reminisces about an Easter that he remembers from 1926, which is just about 94 years ago. Um, and there's some interesting things in here. So I'm going to read this, this section of his book. It's entitled Easter Party of Long Ago. It says, tomorrow is Easter and it brings to mind an Easter party I participated in when I was a child. That is because it was the most special party I have ever participated in. And that must have been about 1926. The only way any of you can appreciate this fully is to remember that this happened 94 years ago. And being backwoods youngins and having nothing of the finer things in life, we were treated to a party that would be as modern today as those that were being given across the, that are being given across the nation. It was simply out of this world. This is how it came about. There was a lady that grew up in the community named Miss Sadie. Now she was married, but but we never used Mrs. with a woman's name. We called all of them Miss. And Miss Sadie married Mr. Bill DeFarley. And it don't take no stretch of the imagination to know that there were no De Farleys roaming around among these piney woods. We had plain names. Well, Miss Sadie De Farley decided to come home for Easter and put on a party for the neighborhood youngins. She didn't have any children of her own and she lived in Tampa, Florida. I'm sure she came in on the train for that was the way of most long after she arrived. And Mr. Foy had a pretty stretch of pine woods at the end of the field behind the house. And that's where Miss Sadie held the party. There was a lot of pine straw on the ground and not much underneath. So it was an ideal place to have an Easter egg hunt. Well, Miss Sadie put on the dog. And don't you think it one minute that there weren't pretty toys and things like that in those days? It was just the fact that us poor folk didn't have any money to buy them with. And you've got another thing coming if you think we had just old hen eggs to use for that hunt. No, sir. She had candy Easter eggs of every color in the rainbow and plenty of them. Of course, we had some dyed boiled hen eggs too. They used to take lye soap and rub over the eggs good then put a piece of some colorful silk cloth that would bleed easily, wrap it around the eggs and drop them in the pot and boil them. And the colors would transfer to the eggs. And some youngins just took crayons and scratched colors on them. 
but I ain't even got started yet. There were these little carts to which rabbits were hitched toys, and there were and there was all that colorful shredded dyed paper in the carts and small eggs lying among the paper. There were Easter baskets with fuzzy baby chicks and miniature hens and roosters inside, toys also, and little rabbits. There were large Easter eggs made from paper that opened in half, filled with candies, jelly beans as I recalled it, and the eggs had that fancy lacy stuff where they opened. There were chocolate covered marshmallow candies in the shape of animals. But one of the greatest treats was the fishing at the well. Mr. Foy had a well in his front yard and Miss Sadie had taken backer twine and attached it to the celluloid toys and dropped them down in the water. There was a string for every youngin and you can imagine the excitement as we gathered around the well curb, holding our strings until we were told to pull them up. And we had to put down our other goodies while we pulled the strings from the well. There were little boats, frogs, alligators, fishes, and other toys. And we were thrilled beyond description with all our catches until we went back to our other treasures. Some of them were gone, or we got the wrong ones, and there was one of everything for each youngin. But heck, there was enough to go around even with a little bit gone. We spent the entire afternoon at the Easter party, and there has never been a more excited bunch of youngins. It was as colorful as it would be today. There was a variety of things to play with. We'd get wash basins or tubs when we got home to float our celluloid toys in. We'd ration out the candy eggs and take special delight in choosing the colors to eat for their flavors. This was better than any Christmas we'd ever known. And there was no person in the community loved more than Miss Sadie that Easter weekend, not even Miss Lily, our Sunday school teacher. It's still amazing to me how Miss Sadie was able to put on such a party during those hard times. But she and Mr. DeFarley ran an employment agency in Tampa, and they sure must have got a lot more jobs for people there than available in Eastern North Carolina in those days. That woman spent a lot of money on that party too. I'll bet she spent at least 10 or $15 for all that stuff. By comparison, I'll bet the same thing would cost a minimum of $200 today. So I thought that was a good piece of history. Uh, even though that was a uh, lavish Easter party back then, it still expressed some, some traditional things that we don't necessarily do today. Um, and it, it's, we don't see community parties just like that um, today. So we do hope that you guys have a good Easter weekend and that you can get outside and enjoy some good weather and a good Easter egg hunt um, at your house. Uh, we wish you guys all the best. Thank you.